What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because we're doing another post ban list deck profile and I personally love this ban list. I think this ban list is great except Lightning Storm to 2 was kind of weird but one deck that not a lot of people are talking about but I still think is going to be one of the best decks in today's format. Even if it's not the best deck it's definitely going to be up there and that is Kashtura. Now Kashtura did take some hits. Unicorn going to 2, Arise Heart going to 1 and then Diablosa is going to 0. However it doesn't actually change too much of the consistency of the deck. I I mean the deck still puts up a macro cosmos even though it's just that one now but it can fit in just hand traps and shifter and whatnot but now if you guys enjoyed today's videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more you content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff you catch it right here on the channel and we do shorts every single day so make sure you guys stay tuned for all of that so thank you guys all for watching i really do appreciate the support that i've been getting through this whole time and now that the ban list is out we have so much content coming so really i hope you guys enjoyed today's video and i hope you guys stay tuned for all the other videos we got planned so thank you guys all and with that let's get right into the deck profile so just before we get started in today's profile i do want to say that kosha i still think is going to be one of the best decks in today's format and that's because the consistency of the main deck really hasn't changed all that much so let's get right into it here of course we're playing two kosha unicorn it is now at two after the ban list and i know it does suck losing a unicorn especially because unicorn was your one card starter this card essentially got you into your entire combo but you still have the rest of your deck to play which is really powerful you still have all the other consistency so losing a single unicorn doesn't matter as much as people might say so two unicorns we got three Kashtura Fenrir of course as well Fenrir of course being one of the best starters in the deck on top of that Fenrir on its own is just such a powerful card so you do got to be playing three Fenrir then we're playing two Rise Heart we're not playing three and we're not playing one so I know some people have been on one I've even seen some people on three I don't think you need to be playing three I think two is the perfect number the reason for that is because you lost the unicorn I thought one was actually what you should be at prior to unicorn going to two but because unicorn is now add to i do like the rise heart just having that extra extender so that's why i like playing the second one and i think it's just such a really powerful card on its own as well so that's why we're playing the two rise heart then we're playing the one ogre the one scareclaw kashtura as well as the one tier limits kashtura again the reason for playing the scareclaw and the tier limits not just one or the other because i know typical builds usually play one or the other but the reason we're actually playing both now is because again we lost the unicorn so we need to be able to extend as much as possible because we did lose that consistency in the one card combo with unicorn right Right? So for that reason, even though this deck is still really consistent, it's not like one of those things where you lost consistency and you're just done for. It's one of those things where it's like, okay, we may have lost Unicorn. However, if we open Fenrir plus Rise Heart or Fenrir plus one of the other Kashtura names, we can still play, which is why I like playing the Ogre. I like playing the Scareclaw. I like playing the Tier Limits Kashtura because these are all extenders and more names for you, which is really, really powerful. And that's it for the monsters. These are the only ones you need, to be honest with you. You don't want to brick on too many of them. They are all, of course, level sevens. And once you summon the first one, other than Rise Heart, it's kind of a little bit harder to get themselves on the field. So these are all the monsters you need. Again, very simplistic, I think, over here. And then for these spells, we're playing three Kostra or Birth. I mean, this card is still absolutely insane. You still got to be playing three Birth. Birth is one of the most powerful deck cards in the deck. Being able to normal summon a level seven monster, being able to monster reborn cards from your banished zone or your graveyard is insane. So three Birth is very, very powerful. We're playing three Theosis, of course. Theosis just, you, you, you can't not play three of these. Like you're playing three Theosis, three Planet. Like these are all just your consistency cards, right? So you're still maxing out on all this consistency, which is why I still think this is going to be one of the most powerful decks. Because losing a single Unicorn, again, Again, you just make up for it with another name and then you're still playing all of these consistency cards and then you have your monster reborn in birth as well right so three theosis three of the wraithos and then we're playing the one terraforming of course to get to our wraithos as well we're getting into the traps here we do like playing the one big bang of course for the rise heart big bang combo but i do like playing the one preparations i think with ogre it makes a lot of sense to be playing the preparations and preparations on his own is actually still a pretty good card during either player's turn you can special summon a costure a monster that's banished or in your hand so it's just recursion for you again it gets you a extra Fenrir on your side of the field which could be really powerful getting an extra banish this card on its own just on the board still does a lot for you even if you're not able to full combo having the Fenrir is still kind of like having a board which is really nice right so that's why I like playing the preparations and then if you end up playing against trap decks this can be relevant as well that doesn't come up as often but this card is still really powerful so I like playing the one preparations then moving on to non-engine so this is pretty much all of your engine stuff so for non-engine we have actually a lot of space here we're playing three book of moon so the reason I actually like book of moon is from 
multiple reasons. One, in the mirror match, Book of Moon is really powerful, right? But mirror match aside, Book of Moon is also really good into a lot of other decks that are really focused around the Ixie summoning mechanic and Mana Dome, the, the Synchro summoning mechanic. So I think Book of Moon is actually a really good card going first and going second. Going first, being able to set it, of course, as a form of disruption. Going second, now you're able to break boards with Book of Moon. I think Sword Soul, because Denglong is back as well, so Sword Soul might be relevant. So Book of Moon can just be really good into different matchups, into Sprite as well. It's not bad. So there's so many different decks that Book of Moon is good into. So I still really like playing the three Book of Moon. And then we're playing three Shifter, three Joel and Lockbird, and three Ash as our hand traps, as well as three Imperm. So we're playing 12 hand traps here. I think this is the perfect number that you need. Now you have to be, in my opinion, main decking Shifter in today's format. I know in the last couple formats, people would side the Shifters. I think main decking the Shifters just makes so much sense in this format. Because if you think about it, Draco Faceoff just came back. So Draco Slayer is going to be relevant. And this card is really good into Draco Slayer. Sky Strikers are back. So this card's really good into Sky Striker. And then Shifter in general is really good into Super Heavy Samurai, which don't get me wrong, can still play even with the ban. It can still play. So it's really good into Super Heavy. It's really good into Purely. There's so many different things that Shifter is good into, which is why I like still playing the three Shifters. Speaking of, by the way, Pokemon is also not bad into Purely as well, right? So just wanted to let you guys know there. But yeah, so the Shifter I think is just so, so powerful. And then I think Droll is still one of the best hand traps in today's format. So you still got to be playing three Droll. And Droll obviously is also really good into Striker as well, right? So three Droll is really nice. And then three Ash and three Imperm. These are just really generic and good into pretty much every deck. And then for consistency, we're playing three Pot of Prosperity. I think this is pretty self-explanatory. Just getting into your deck a little bit deeper is always going to be a good thing, right? So that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. I don't think I would change this up at all. I I'm really happy with this main deck, even with Unicorn at two. I still think this main deck is very, very consistent. So moving on to the extra deck here, of course, we're only playing the one Arise Heart because Arise Heart is now at one. But we're now we're playing three Shangri-La. To be honest with you, the only reason we're playing three is because sometimes you're going to get rid of one off of the Prosperity. But on top of that, in the mirror match, it makes it so that your opponent can't just, you know, snipe the Shangri-La and then you're only stuck with playing with one, right? So I think playing with three makes a lot of sense. We're playing two Zeus, of course, one Red Eyes Flare Metal Dragon, one Big Eye, one of the Dark Arm Dragon. And then what I like to play, and this is kind of like a tech, I like to play the Odd Eyes Rebellion package with the Odd Eyes Rebellion Dragon Overload. And this is kind of like an OTK package for you where if you get this off, it's just super, super powerful. And what your opponent might do in the mirror match is if they're sniping cards, they might want to snipe one of these, probably the Odd Eyes Rebellion, just so that you can't push and OTK them. But if they're sniping these cards, then you have more room in your extra deck to play around with, right? Because even though Diablosis is gone, they can still snipe cards out of your extra deck with something like Unicorn, right? So for that reason, I still think you need to be playing multiples of some of the important cards like Zeus, Shangri-La. And then these cards are kind of like your bait cards, right? It's kind of one of those things where it's like, okay, now my opponent is going to snipe this so they don't get OTK'd, but I have access to everything else, which is really nice, right? And if they don't snipe these, then you can push for a lot of damage with these, which is really nice. And then we're playing the one Baron, of course, with any level seven and like an Ash, you have a Baron, which is really nice. It doesn't come up too often, but when it does, it's really, really powerful. And then we're playing the one Asa. Asa is just generically is really good, especially with Fenrir. Then you can take your opponent's Fenrir. Uh, Scareclaw Castor is also an Earth, so making Asa is really nice because you, you can take your opponent's venue in the mirror match. We're playing the one donor as well as the one infinite track Goliath so that you can put it under your Arise Heart and you have a really good time. So uh, yeah, that's it for the extra deck. I think this is pretty standard. The only thing I think that has changed from most builds is people were on three Arise Heart and two Shangri-La, but now people are just on one Arise Heart. So I like to maximize on this and then I like to play this package over here. So that's just me personally. I just, I really like that package. So it's really up to you guys. Any rank sevens could work here, but I just really like this package. And then for the side deck here, I'm just gonna show you guys a mock side deck. Again, Again, this is not a side deck that you have to necessarily play but these are my ratios and theories for the side deck is one we're playing three kaijus and that's cumongous i really like playing the earth kaiju specifically because it's one of those ones where it can help you make asa if you kaiju your opponent if you have another kaiju that you can special summon to your field then you can use that earth kaiju to make an asa take your opponent's fenrir and that's again only in the mirror match really but if you're not playing in the mirror match then of course then just kaijus in general against purely against striker and stuff are really really powerful so that's why we're playing the three cumongous here and then we're playing the three ghosts Ogre, I think Ogre is good into a lot of decks as well. So this is kind of like the flex spot where, you know, the last three cards you guys can kind of choose. This is kind of like your flex spot. I really liked Ogre. I thought Ogre was good. Ogre also being a level three tuner means that when you side it in, you have more ability to make a card like Baron. So that's really nice. That's why I like the three Ogre. Then we're playing three triple tactics talent. I think tactics is such a good card in today's format into so many different formats. And so for that reason, I think it makes a lot of sense to be playing this in the side deck. Now, this is the card that I was thinking of swapping in for Book of Moon. So instead of playing Book of Moon in the main, 
you can play TTT in the main. However, I just chose to go with Book of Moon just because Book of Moon is so good going first and going second. But again, this is just all different options for you guys that you guys can try out because at the end of the day, all of these non-engine cards can always be changed based off of the formats and where the format evolves. Keep in mind that this balance just came out. So as the format evolves, we can always change some of these non-engine pieces. I still think Book of Moon is really good, but if TTT proves to be a little bit better, swap the TTTs with the Book of Moon. Still very powerful and whatnot, right? I know we're playing the two Lightning Storm and the Harpy's Feather Duster, of course, just most so for back row. And then going first, I like to side in the three anti-spell because you once you get your combo off, essentially, if you flip anti-spell against your opponent, especially if you think about it in today's format, Striker is going to be relevant. Draco Slayer might be relevant. Anti-spell in the mirror match is also very, very powerful, right? Because you've already set up your board and anti-spell is going to make it so your opponent can't set up a board, right? So I think anti-spell in the side deck makes a lot of sense as well. But that's it for the deck here. Like you guys can see, I think it's very consistent. And again, all of these non-engine can always be changed based off of where the format evolves. So just keep your mind open in that sense because it's kind of like, okay, Book of Moon in, in theory, I think makes a lot of sense now. But if the format evolves where, you know, Book of Moon is not as powerful, TTT is more powerful, or just board breakers or more hand traps, you know, all these cards can always be swapped. I'm confident with Book of Moon in the main deck. I think the extra deck makes a lot of sense. I think the side deck makes a lot of sense. But yeah, try this deck out for yourselves. Don't believe that this deck is gone. I don't think it's gone. And I still think it's going to be very powerful in today's format. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on Kashura post June ban list. Now, don't get me wrong. This deck you guys can see is still very, very consistent. It can still do all the things that it did before. Sure, you can't end on double Arise Heart anymore. However, the deck still does a lot of cool things and people forget that just ending on a unicorn and a Fenrir can sometimes be a board on its own. Fenrir banishing a card your opponent controls, unicorn extra deck ripping is still a thing, which is absolutely insane. So if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, but we do sometimes a full 10 videos per week because we do five shorts, a short every single day. And then you guys are gonna get videos like these ones, the deck profiles, the combo videos, the dual replays, all that good stuff. So make sure you guys stay tuned into all of that. So thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you with that. Then go sign it out. Peace.